For Krima Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is the spokesperson for the Commission for Gender Equality, Javo Baloyi, to discuss gender-based violence issues. Mr. Baloyi, your organization is urging uh, the justice system to speed up cases that are gender-based violence related to restore public faith uh, following the death of Hilary Gadi. Where are the shortcomings in the system currently? Thank you very much for the question. The shortcomings from our monitoring systems as a commission, it goes to the issue of collecting evidence uh, from where the actual act happened. And secondly, the non-availability at times of judges who deal with specifically and magistrate who deal specifically with cases of gender-based violence. And also, the issue of uh, lawyers also, even lawyers are very, very shrewd of late. They want to get their client off uh, by any, any means possible. So those are some of the issues that um, uh, gets to be a, a deterrent in so far as gender-based violence cases are concerned. And also the issue of um, evidence uh, gathering by novices instead of um, seasoned professionals within the police. That results in cases of gender-based violence uh, taking forever to prosecute. Hence, we're calling for such a, a, a determination to be done as quickly as possible. And for those now who might not be familiar with your organization's role, can you briefly unpack it for us? The Commission for Gender Equality is one of the Chapter 9 institutions. We are established out of Act of Parliament and the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa under a CG Act 39 of 1996. As amended, we do things like monitoring, advocacy, research, and also we do public education, uh, litigation, and uh, legal clinics, insofar as gender-related issues are concerned. And our mandate is broad. Normally, people who are mostly us men will assume we are defenders of women. Meanwhile, it's not the case. We defend everyone. It's only that you know we are skewed towards uh, women, trying to redress the imbalances that was there in society because women were bearing the brand of a lot of discrimination. As a Commission for Gender Equality, we report to Parliament. However, we get our money through treasury, through the budget, vote through the Ministry of Women, Youth, Persons with Disability. So we're trying to infuse gender aspect in policies. We have presented plenty of reports, research reports before Parliament. We are not an implementing agency. We have got the powers to subpoena at one stage we subpoena the office of the president to get to understand what are the gender determination that they're doing within the office. We follow the constitution. We know South Africa is not a religious state, it's a secular state. However, the constitution is the supreme law of our country. That's what we use. We have got officers who represent us all over, even in the constitutional court. And we can also act as a friend of the court in cases of gender-based violence. And Mr. Baloy, we are talking to you after we saw that the three suspects now in Hilary Gadi's murder case have appeared in court. Are you satisfied uh, with the work of the SAPS on the case? We cannot falter the police as yet, but I want to see a successful prosecution. Arresting people willy-nilly, it, it doesn't help, but we need the real perpetrators of this heinous crime to be arrested and sentenced. And, and, and according with the laws of this country. That would be pleasing to us, but we are happy. SAPS has done something very uh, commendable. We are proud of them, that they can do the same in every case, regardless of the person who is involved. Now many South Africans, they have lost confidence in the justice system. Do you think the justice system is sending a strong message to the perpetrators through the convictions? Previously, we did not think so. Ever since we, the three legislations were enacted into law, we have seen a change. Our problem, you could even see our statement, we're saying justice should self-correct. The inconsistencies that were there within the system, I'm glad the justice system, they've tried to address that. They're engaging with us and other like-minded institutions to say, look, we understand you have got an issue. How, how do you pro uh, prosecute a crime, similar crime, uh, you will remember the case of uh, Oscar Pistorius. Someone that did the same similar thing and was given a life sentence. Oscar Pistorius was given five years a uh, sentence. And that is inconsistencies that we're talking about. But we have seen a, a, a tremendous change. But the message needs to be sent because one of the things that is still happening now, 
is that, you know, when these people are, um, are arrested, they're given bail, they go to court and get sentenced for whatever years, they go to school, they've got more freedom and more rights as, as compared to you and I. And they come back, they watch smart TV, they've got cell phones, and that's something that the justice system must look at, that the perpetrators of gender-based violence must be treated as severely, as seriously as possible. But we're not saying that, you know, they don't have rights. They do have rights as human beings as governed by the constitution of this, this country. However, the inconsistency within the justice makes people not to have a serious trust in the justice system because you only hear about it. You don't see that it's working for everyone. Do you offer any kind of support now to the affected families? We work with various institutions like SADAC. Uh, we work with uh, other institutions because we are not implementers. We work with government departments when it comes to these things uh, of gender based and counseling and make referrals. That's what we do and we monitor the, the progress thereof. Like we work with social development, we work with the same police so that, you know, we see that, you know, one person gets justice and gets the, the best uh, care. And we, it's the duty of care that, you know, it can be given by us, but we make sure that, you know, whatever we do is fit for people, people get assistance and they'll come back to us to say, Commission, you know, thank you very much for the assistance that we, we, we have received through you. And that's how we work. We're supposed to work in a, in a circle of some sort, not in silo mentality for people to get assistance. We know now that uh, most women will acquire protection orders um, to protect themselves from the perpetrators. But what are you doing uh, in cases where women die before they get uh, help? Why should women die before anything gets done? We we have raised our voices high. We have subpoenaed the police three times uh, to raise that question that you are raising. IPAD has to get involved and we monitor what IPAD is doing ourselves. And in order to come to determine whether there was biasness, there was objectivity in some of these cases where we know. Yeah. But however, I need to raise something very, very profound. Families at times play a very significant role in this issue. Wherein we find that, you know, protection orders are not safe. We find that the family families will say, we'll sort it out amongst ourselves. Yet, the woman wanted to apply a protection order. When the protection order is applied, then it is too late because the perpetrator might have killed the victim and they've killed the person that is involved. So families at times, because a person is a breadwinner, they've got a tendency of protecting the breadwinner instead of ensuring that, you know, the person who is being abused, who is life inside the mercy of the perpetrator, can be killed at any time and do something accordingly. Mm. And now what would you say uh, to the people who would say that they don't even feel the need to go to the police stations to report the cases because some of the police uh, will not uh, offer help and they will just say, simply say, no, go back home and discuss with your partner and sort things out. It's, it's so sad, you know. Police aren't supposed to play the role of social worker and psychologist. It, it, there are people employed for that. And police at times, you know, put their, their work in harm's way because of the familiarity with the perpetrators. What we have, we have done, we are working with the police to say, change the mindset police do take a case down, let the case be investigated. The law mustn't look at the face of a person and look at the position of a person in society, the haves and the have not. The law must look at the person who's coming there as a citizen of this country to come and open the case. And that is a very fundamental thing that you have raised there, whereby police, you know, become the, the, the enabler. It's a wrong thing to do. It shouldn't be, do, it shouldn't be done because you're putting people's lives in harm's way. You're leaving kids as orphans. You're leaving kids without mothers because of your own unbecoming behavior when it comes to dealing with gender-based violence. Also, you must know some of these police are not okay with the rules of the country. They don't understand the constitution. They don't even understand some of the legal imp 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 imperatives and that they work upon wish. So it is upon them, the police, to build capacity. We can do so much as a gender commission and society, but the police also must also ensure that they build capacity for their own so that when they deal with gender-based, there shouldn't be secondary victimization. There should be a, a, a punitive action based on the, the rule of the law. And what you would like to say now, Mr. Baloi, to the families of the victims who are waiting for the cases of their loved ones uh, to be finalized. We know that in our country, some of these cases, they drag for a very long time. And most definitely, cases can take as much as nine years, as far as we have heard and we have witnessed and we know of. What we're saying as a Commission for Gender Equality, we're saying we feel your pain, 
We, we are with you where it's possible that you can report these cases to the nearest office of the commission. We have got the toll free number 0800 007709. We also have got the website www.cge.org.za. We can also use um, the nearest office of CG, but the head office one number is 011-403-7182. They can make a referral today. People can go to your website and so info at cge.org.za and lay a complaint to say, our case are dragging, it's a gender-related gender case. We have assisted people in Amaskral, we have assisted people in the Western Cape, where cases, and also our lawyers will go to the court to say, find out what's happening with this case so that we can monitor it. It's incumbent upon us as citizens of this country to work with institutions like the Commission for Gender Equality, Human Rights Commission, CRL, when it comes to languages, when it comes to religion, uh, there's a CRL commission. So I employ citizens not to keep quiet when issues of this nature happen. We have got office and our services, Sane, it's, very, it's, it's, for, it's free. What would you do, we'll do within our ambit of the law and within our reach and where we can't will tell you that, you know, this is where we, we're going to make a referral. So that, you know, you go out of the commission satisfied that, you know, the commission is there to help you and to advance the mandate and the gender discourse that, you know, we are responsible for. Thank you very much, Mr. Baloy. I hope uh, this interview will help a lot of people who are not even aware about your organization uh, and the work that you do for free for the South Africans. That was Javu Baloy in conversation with Quality about the gender-based violence issues.